Hey guys, welcome back to part three of my pore series. So really digging into pores and I've covered how to prevent making them look worse with your skincare, how to address them with lifestyle measures, how to go about using actives to tackle them. Today, I thought I'd do an overview of, I guess, the more interventional approach to pores. So um, oral treatments that you would be prescribed and procedures. Now, I suppose the first question is, do I ever actually treat someone just for pores? And I think I can honestly say in my entire over a decade, year, you know, years of practicing, I've never treated someone just for their pores because usually they're presenting in context of some other, I suppose, bigger picture issue, whether it's acne or premature aging and the changes that go along with that. So we certainly discuss pore size and what might happen as a consequence of treatment, but it isn't the primary focus because I think the honest answer is that they're hard to treat, to make smaller. Now, when I talked to you about the different mechanisms by which pores become more prominent, I talked about the impact of hormones when our oil glands switch on at puberty and everything just gets, you know, oily and greasy in the T-zone because of this activation. So, Intuitively, it makes sense that things that make us less prone to hormonal influences, and that means things like um, the contraceptive pill, for instance, are going to reduce the amount of hormonal flux and sway. And typically, the combined oral contraceptive pill will make skin less oily because you see less of that menstrual cycle. So. I tend to get more oily just before my period. Most people do because it's the progestogen predominant part of the cycle. The same is true for pregnancy. When progestogen is predominant, you will be more oily typically. So anything that reduces that fluctuation will make you less oily and therefore tends to make pores look smaller because there's less traffic through the pore. Again, I don't think I've ever met somebody who went on the pill as uh, you know, uh, for, their, for their pores, but definitely when people stop the contraceptive pill, they will notice that as part of a, a number of things changing, for example, they might develop a bit more acne than they previously had, they will notice they're more oily too. Other things that can influence oil in, in the skin and we'll often use as part of an acne strategy will be drugs like spironolactone um, and also cytopridorone acetate, which is often used in the context of polycystic ovarian syndrome. Now, again, the main reasons for taking these medications, because they're often prescribed for long-term management, and by that I mean months, two years, is for acne or other symptoms that go alongside acne as part of PCOS. So again, you might notice your pores get smaller as part of those sorts of treatments and their impact on you, but not a reason necessarily to go on them for pores in the first place. Roaccutane is the last drug I'll mention in context of reducing skin oiliness. Yes, I've prescribed it for what's called seborrhea, where the excessive degree of oiliness has caused some a lot of problems in how they see themselves and their self-confidence. And as a consequence of treating the oil gland overactivity, you will see a reduction in pore size. Again, a complex medicine needs to be prescribed by somebody who knows what they're doing, needs to be monitored carefully. So not something, again, to be thought about for treating your pores, but it is something you might notice if you're prescribed it for one of the other reasons that it's used. So then, that sounds a bit, you know, nihilistic, but again, I think it just shows you the context in which we should view our pores. And I think that how strongly you strive for an improvement in them probably does depend on whether or not other things like acne are happening at the same time. Now, procedurally, more typically we're thinking about managing the signs of premature aging. So pores may improve in the context of treatments that boost collagen in the skin, because the idea is if the pore is kind of sitting like this, a little wider, a little more open because of loss of that structure around the tube, that is the hair follicle coming through onto the surface, that you might make them a little more taut and upright by supporting them with more of those kind of scaffolding proteins in the skin. So things like collagen induction therapy and non-ablative lasers that are targeting collagen 
may give an improvement in pore size over time. But if I'm honest with the patient, I will counsel them that this is something they may or may not notice. And if it happens, it'll probably happen four to six months down the line. And therefore, it should almost be like a nice benefit, you know, secondary to the primary reason that they're having the treatment. Again, I rarely recommend procedures specifically to improve pore size. I think one caveat is to mention ablative lasers because I think, again, people see them as being, I suppose they're aggressive, they, they have potential for profound results when it comes to wrinkles um, and uneven pigmentation and acne scarring. I think there's a possibility that pores may paradoxically seem more prominent after ablative lasers simply because the structure of our pores are actually so that the narrowing on the surface may be a little narrower than what lies beneath. And if you trim off the very top layers, you may expose a slightly wider neck underneath. So it's something to bear in mind. And if that thought concerns you and you're potentially having lasers or some other problem, do raise that with your practitioner so you have a very clear idea what's going to happen in the T-zone of your face. So that's my view on the more advanced end of the spectrum when it comes to tackling pores. I'm naturally cautious. I want to make sure that someone has a really clear idea um, of what to expect, whether they're embarking on tablets or a procedure um, in context of pores that bother them. Um, but it's, uh, you know, this is opinion. So I'm really interested to hear what your feedback is in this video, guys. Um, how have you found these sorts of treatments helped you or hindered you with your pores? Please share. Bye for now.